there, the wind knows I'm coming outside with you guys. Okay, this is the garden bed I'm going to plant out today, all with seed. Um, so, you would have seen a few weeks ago us make these garden beds. Then they're, they're, they're what we've got to work with. We're renovating, they're okay, so okay is pretty good right now. You can see with the soil, the manure's not completely broken down yet. Uh, I've still got some hard bits of soil, a few little rocks that I'll just pop back onto the driveway. Jet's eating a pine cone behind me. He's got perfect timing. Um, so it's not ideal, but it's okay. It, and okay is pretty good. So if you're really worried about the condition of your soil and if it was ready to go or not, you might, if you don't have compost, buy a bag of compost. Not ideal because it comes in plastic. Uh, or if you've got a trailer, head to your local landscaping and you can pop some directly into buckets in your trailer if you only need a small amount. Oh, well I'm biting my knee, my toe. Um, yeah, but I'm not too worried. I think it's broken down enough for, for what seeds I'm planting. I'm just going to turn it over a little bit and um, get some of those tops broken up and then I'm ready to plant. As you can see, I'm not going too deep. I'm really just raking the top of it. Grabbing any big, big bits of rock. There's a few bits of rubbish in there. This soil, um, a lot of it we got from a friend who was digging out their garden for a pool. So it's a real mixed bag of topsoil. You know, a bit of what would have been under paving, I guess. Things like that. And then we've just mixed it with horse manure and some of the compost and mulch that we had. I'm happy with this soil now. Just really a light break and you can see the difference it's made. Have a look at that. Nice dark colour. It's got a few, look, there's still quite a few rocks in it, but look at that colour and the manures will spread through it nicely. That is good for planting now. I'm okay with that. I'm going to get this top layer nice and damp. I'd rather water the soil before I put the seeds in. Um, if you do it after, you risk washing and moving all your seeds. Think about how fine and young they are. So if I give this topsoil a good wash down, then I can just pop the seeds directly in. But as you can see, we don't have great uh, water pressure here. That's the reality uh, of the tank and the pump. And when water's in use elsewhere, you could have it a little bit drier it's hot here so that's going to dry it fairly quick anyway now all I have are some of these um, these are peas that I've dried out I'm going to pop them in first and uh, they, they're climbers I'm going to plant them around the outside for ease for me to trellis them when I need to or if I have to if time doesn't permit I can just kind of let them hang down the side but I'm thinking it might be too hot on that tin to do that and again it's a bit of trial and error when you do these things this is the first time I've used these kind of raised beds so all I'm doing is I'm just all I'm doing is just smoothing the area out because I have got still got lumpy bits of manure just smoothing a bit of area out run a finger pop a pea in if you end up popping them too close don't worry because once they're seedlings, you can move them then. Okay. And that is that section done. Now that I've got all those uh, peas planted out in that garden bed, 
I've basically gone around, so that's all snow peas and peas. Um, I've pretty much filled that garden bed with them. Why have I done that? A, um, they're a veg and a salad, uh, so you can eat them raw or cooked. So we can have them in a hot meal and a cold meal. I've got five kids. They're also great for the kids to just be able to come out, walk past, pick a, pick a pea, um, you know, a pea pod and either take the peas out or eat it whole, however they choose to do it. So it's a great snack. It's, uh, and it's versatile, you can, or you can just put them, you know, whole into lunch boxes. Um, so they're straight in and they can pick at them through the day as well. So they're pretty much a summer go-to in this house. I'll also do winter peas as well. So they're in the ground anyway. Um, in the middle of that garden bed, I've also just popped a couple of zucchini uh, seeds because there's a little gap there. Uh, the zucchinis do spread out but I've still got enough growing season uh, for them. So here's my cucumbers that you saw me plant a few weeks back. They're now seedlings and they're ready to go into the garden bed. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna to do today. These have a growing time here. Uh, they can go up to about 70 days until ready. So probably in 50 days, I'll be picking cucumbers off of this and I'll have cucumbers for another 20 days after that. So working that out in a uh, dry climate, that will take me up until Easter. So um, 8th of April uh, being the 28th of January today. So yeah, so give or take 50 to 70 days. These will creep a bit like a pumpkin does, not quite so far. So I'm popping them on the edge of the garden bed and allowing them to creep down towards the wall of the house so they're not gonna get in, driven over or in the way of people. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna pop those in now with my tomato tree. Uh, it's already got some flowers on it and some cherry tomatoes down there. I've also got here, these are a South Australian native and they're a Kwandong tree. Unfortunately, the goats got to these twice. Uh, so we haven't seen a huge amount of growth from them. They're pretty slow growing anyway. They have a lovely little fruit on them that you can um, eat whole, make jam. We haven't seen them pickled. I wasn't keen on that, I must say though. Uh, but yeah, Kwandong jam is pretty popular. So I've got three of these growing. And I'll show you in another video because you actually, um, I've got some Kwandong seeds, which are beautiful if you want to make jewellery with seeds. But uh, you actually get them started on the hottest day of your year. So I'll get those going soon. I'm hoping our hottest day of the year was the day we had the fires and we don't have that much heat left in the season. Otherwise, it's pretty hot right now. So I'm just going to pop these ones in. I'm just going to pick out, because this is topsoil uh, from someone's garden, I'm going to get a little bit of grass and things that are going to come through as the water is provided to it. Just pick a nice area. Now, this will come out fairly loosely because it's in that seed soil. So I'm literally just going to tip it upside down and break them apart. Look at that beautiful, all that root that you can see there. Stick them in. And that is it. So I'll just mound that up. It slopes down slightly, so by mounding it up, I know when I water it, it's just going to collect that water and it's not going to run away. And then this one, in next to it. Same again, just mount it up a little bit and they're going to need a little bit of water, so we'll get that now. We'll use my giant cup of water that I got all dirt in. And these will just get watered when the other seedlings get watered. So probably a little bit in the morning, a little spray in the morning, and a little spray in the evening. If I'd wanted, and I had just one in here, I could have planted it into that because that's going to compost down anyway. 
Uh, I might get one more seed go out of that one. There we go. Okay, that is all my seed beds uh, planted out for today. So just to recap at the back, I have the tomato, basil, and cucumber growing. I then have the peas, the snowy peas and the zucchini growing. I have my bok choy in my tunnel, which I'm just gonna give a bit more water to, and then I'm gonna close up. And in the front one, I have seeds growing uh, with parsley, lettuce, all those kind of summer good stuff uh, growing. So I'm gonna tidy up here. And I'm gonna head inside for a nice cold iced coffee uh, before picking up the kids this afternoon from school. And yeah, thank you everyone. So just remember, if you have stuff growing or you don't have it growing yet and you're in South Australia or anywhere really, think about when that first cold night's going to be and count your days back and see where you're at. I've counted everything back. Everything I've planted today will be well and truly either done or ready come April 8, which for us is heading into that autumn weather um, and that those cooler nights. So this stuff is all good for another growing. So if you already have stuff growing, plant some more of it. That will, that will start to ease up. You should be seeing the end of your peas and things like that already. So if you don't already have seedlings, it's not too late. Thank you for joining us here at Resonance Homestead. Uh, keep cool and we'll see you next time. Thanks.